Understanding the Portrait Bokeh AI tool is our topic on Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Well, hello everyone. So our topic today is on Boca, all right? And how to use the Port Boca AI tool. Now here's an image that was shot and, and it's directly straight out of camera. It was shot with an 85 millimeter lens at F 1.4. Look at the beautiful blur that's in the background and these geometric shapes. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. Look at that. I mean, that looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, we use that because the subject is away from the background and we have a, a, a lens that gives us enough of that com a compression to where I'm compressing the background close to her. So let's look at the same lens with the same f-stop, but notice we don't have that beautiful bokeh behind her. Even though it was shot with the same lens and the same f-stop, the subject is too close to the background. So to fix it, we just moved her three feet and this is what we came up with. All right. So that's awesome. Now what we want to do is we want to take an image like this with that was shot at f-16. Now look, look how everything is in focus. So we're going to use the new Portrait Bokeh AI tool to help us blur the background and give us those geometric shapes. Now, in doing that, what I want to do is explain to you more in depth on what the Portrait Bokeh AI tool is doing. So here we are. And let me jump over to this. All right. I'm going to go right to the beginning. And by the way, you can find all this information in our user manual. And the easiest way to get to it is within the program, file help user manual, or just go to luminar.tips forward slash AI manual. So after we set the amount, the amount is going to be arbitrary. We're going to adjust the background. Now this is going to help us redefine the quality of the bokeh or the background blur. Now these are essential controls to be adjusted to match your personal taste. So, the amount, we're going to come over here and let's just grab an arbitrary amount. Notice how it's already blurring the background. Let's give it a second and it'll actually show us, look at this, it actually shows us what it's selecting. It does a great job selecting this image and we notice just up in here, there's a few things we want to adjust. So the brush tools are going to help us with that. So here's focus. And I, do, I did notice right here, I'm going to use the bracket keys left and right to make the brush bigger or smaller. I want to paint this area in because I want that select defocus part of it, which it is selected this little leaf. I'm going to deselect it over. So that's what the brush controls are for. Focus will select it in red and then defocus the background again, all right? So the background's looking pretty good. Let's blur it a little bit more, right about there. All right, that's great. Now let's jump down here to background. If you don't see all the tools, just click on the little arrow here, and now we have our background selected. The brightness is gonna do just that. It's gonna control how This glow, and let me switch over to show you. With the highlights glow, that's going to control or adjust the brightest of the brightness of the brightest areas of the background, and it's going to add a soft glow to it. So if you have an area that's blown out, like these areas right in here, it's going to adjust the brightness of that and make it a little bit softer. So that's what we have here. We could change the warmth of the background. Let's say golden hour, or we could or make it a little bit cooler. But here, right here, the depth correction, this right here does all the heavy lifting. Watch this. I'm gonna move this all the way over to the left, and now 
in what we're receiving, what we are achieving. We have a bokeh in the background with those geometric shapes. Let's zoom in. Look at that. So that's what the depth curve is going to do. Edge correction from the from the selection that we have here, here selection that's going to help us trim up the areas around our subject. So let's bring this down because it's selecting quite a bit. And what I wanted to do, let me show you this. Look at her flyaway hairs. So right around this area right in here, look close at it. I want to bring some of that back because to me, this looks like she has a hairnet on. All right. So we did the edge correction. We, we brought it back to a minor or down to a low number. So that's fine. Now what we need to do is come back up here to defocus. And I want to adjust the opacity of this. I want to bring it way down and move the radius up just a little bit. Now what I want to do is just softly come in here and paint right around the edges. Now I kept a very low opacity so we could take a couple passes at it and now notice Some of those flyaway hairs. Bring it roughly. Oh, look at that. Now it's bringing it back for us. Oh, look at that. All right. Back into place and give it a second to render. And there it is. It looks more natural. All right. So. There we have it. And let me zoom in just a little bit for us. Oh. So there we have it. Um, by controlling the background and by using those tools that we just did, we're going to get a really beautiful portrait bokeh in the, or bokeh is behind the subject, even though it was, it was shot with an F16 lens. Now, you'd have to ask yourself, well, when would you shoot F16. Well, let's say we have three or four people in the image. Well, if I were to shoot that at 2.8 and they're stacked up together like this, well, the person in the front is going to be in perfect focus, but the person behind them is going to be out of focus. So I have to bump my f-stop up, maybe f8, maybe f11. And in doing that, the background is going to become in focus also. So that's when you could use that little extra portrait bokeh AI to give you that individual look with a group photo, making it look awesome. So guys, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you at the next coffee break.